It was Nelson Mandela who said, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. But if you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. Today, we're going to talk about, very briefly, learning Spanish. I entitled this Learning Spanish Dominican Style. And I hope that it helps some of you who are struggling with learning Spanish and trying to understand Spanish to give you more um, enthusiasm, to give you more zeal, to give you encouragement, if you will, to continue your quest on learning Spanish. Now, the best way I have found over the years is to travel to speaking Spanish places and stay and mingle in Spanish speaking environments. Now, let me give you a little background as to why I came across this. Years ago, I was um, traveling to South America on business. I remember distinctly having to go to Argentina and then to Chile and then back to the United States. It was my first time to South America and certainly my first time doing business in countries that were primarily, I should say, entirely uh, done in Spanish language. Um, when I went to uh, Argentina, I remember distinctly after arriving not being able to understand a single word that the people were saying. It was a convoluted Spanish, if you will. And I don't mean to say that to denigrate anybody in Argentina or any Argentine who speaks that language, not at all. It's just that for my ear, it was very difficult to hear the Spanish that I was normally used to hearing. I grew up in Washington, D.C. Uh, there you would find a lot of Salvadorans, a lot of Hondurans, a lot of Puerto Ricans, in which the Spanish intonation, the Spanish language seemed upon hearing very different when compared to the Argentine Spanish. And so I was lost. I remember because I was able to do the counting of like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten in Spanish, but I wasn't able to quite hear what they were saying. It was frustrating. I remember going once to a corner store uh, to buy some snacks late in the evening and I bought I think a drink some gum maybe some chips or something and you know I handed it to the cash register to the cashier I'm sorry and basically stared because he told me how much it was but I couldn't figure out what the heck he was saying as to what the amount was in pesos and so what I did was I just opened my wallet, took out the largest bill that I had, and handed it to him, hoping that he would return to me the correct change. Later, I found out that he did. In fact, he did. And I was kind of frustrated, and that was simply a problem because I could not speak Spanish, nor at that point understand Spanish. I remember going through the rest of that trip, struggling and on some occasions when I didn't have my translation with me or translator with me. I remember going to Chile and a similar thing happened. I wanted to send some postcards back home and I was trying simply to ask, where is the post office? Had no idea how to say post office in Spanish. It was frustrating. Asking for directions. It was frustrating. Telling a taxi driver where you're supposed to go when he wasn't quite sure where you were going. Frustrating. And so I intended myself that when I got back to the States, I'm going to learn Spanish. So quickly I got out the, um, the dictionary and went to one of the used bookstores and bought a book uh, to try to learn Spanish. Didn't work. I remember signing up for a free community class. Boring. Didn't work for me. I remember signing up um, for, um, oh, what is it called? The app, one of the apps uh, online. I'm not going to mention the name. And um, trying to study that way. It was okay. But... I didn't feel like I was really learning anything. But you know what? One of the things that helped me the most was watching TV, watching um, Spanish language channels, Univision, and watching telenovelas, 
uh, primarily from Mexico, watching the news, watching Sabado Gigante, which was sort of um, a comedy uh, show that came on Saturday nights. And so as I just listened and listened and listened, I really couldn't understand you know, 100% what they were saying, but with the gestures, with the, with the environment where they were, I was able to pick up a little bit. Thing. But it did help my hearing. It did help my hearing, and I really appreciated that. I would listen to music. I would go to YouTube, listen to various videos, look at various movies. And one by one, little by little, I was able to come to a better comprehension and listening skills of Spanish. Wasn't able quite to speak, but yet I could recognize the words. I could recognize some of the phrases and some of the off-repeated sentences uh, that people were saying. And so today, what I wanted to talk to you in sharing this experience is how to encourage you perhaps to learn Spanish in a way that, may, that you may find may suit you. Again, maybe you're not able to tranish, I'm sorry, travel to a Spanish-speaking country. Maybe you are planning to travel to a Spanish-speaking country, so you want to brush up on some Spanish before you go. And so the first thing I would suggest then is to talk to people who do speak Spanish, find people who are talking in Spanish, and if you have an opportunity, speak to them, make friends with them, mix and mingle with them. Whenever you get a chance, perhaps it's a waiter at a, at a restaurant, a cashier, a driver, um, a hotel clerk, or a hotel maid. I remember uh, many times when I was in these hotels, the maids would be coming by, I would talk to them, greet them, just something very simple, and they would greet you back, and you just practice. Practice, practice, practice. Don't be afraid to make a mistake, but every day, just try to say something to someone. Even where I live, if I see somebody who's speaking Spanish, I will dip in the conversation and maybe add a little piece of, or a nugget um, if I can, just to say that, hey, I'm following along and I can actually um, speak some Spanish. Now, maybe that's not your thing, but it is something that you can do. But again, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. People are generally very generous to help you, and they don't expect you to be perfect. I mean, most likely they can't speak English as perfectly as you if English is your first language. Another thing that I've learned that helped me over the years to uh, learn a language, particularly with Korean and to some extent Japanese, but certainly with Spanish, um, was being able to read the signs, reading periodicals or newspapers, reading magazines, um, just looking at them, trying to get familiar with the written words, um, helped me a lot, helped me to recognize various uh, vocabulary words and then make an association as to what it was or what it is. As I've already mentioned, listen to the radio, listen to TV, programs, watch TV programs online, or even when you're in the Dominican Republic. I, I, I know a lot of people go to the Dominican Republic, which is interesting, and they go to their hotels or their resorts, and the first things they're looking for are the English channels, CNN or, or uh, you know, uh, ESPN or whatever some of the major networks are that they may be looking for. But try turning on local channels. Try Try sitting down and watching a few of the comedy programs. Try watching an American movie uh, subtitled in English. It may help you. Um, it can be a little frustrating, but at least you're getting a uh, recognition and a hearing of, of the natural intonation and the flow, if you will, of the, of the language. Try using apps if that's something that you um, feel comfortable in doing and you like doing. Um, and and just, just be consistent. Try to do it every day. When I'm at work, I'll be listening to um, Spanish music. Drive some of my colleagues um, crazy at times, uh, but I'll do it. And I'll look up the lyrics and I'll start singing along with the lyrics. Uh, reading along with the lyrics. If I don't understand a word, I'll ask or I'll look up uh, the word online uh, in a dictionary and just do my best to try to learn. Um, 
and to continue learning because I am by no way is fluent and there's a lot of things that, that I don't know. Now, if you are uh, able, you might prefer to register for a class. For me, it doesn't work. Um, I, I don't know why, but it just really doesn't work. So maybe in your local community center, uh, at the library, there may be some information where you can learn Spanish. Certainly there are Spanish language schools around. And if you are in Santo Domingo, I can speak to that. Um, there are Spanish language teaching schools there. IIC is one. The Santo Domingo Spanish School is another. I'm not plugging either one of them, but I know they do exist. Um, and so you might want to look them up. Look them up online. Perhaps go visit them. Uh, talk to one of the directors there to see if he or she can get you started and, and helpful, depending on how much time um, you may have as you're spending in Santo Domingo. Now, the other thing, and I think is probably the best, uh, is a one-on-one -on -one tutor. Someone that will come and sit beside you, go with you, talk to you, converse with you, correct you, and, and, and I said encourage, but encourage you to, to, to learn Spanish. So these are just a few items that I just wanted to bring to your attention to encourage you. I hope you had a moment to jot them down and, and consider it. Uh, very carefully what might work for you and, and give it a go. The only thing stopping you is you. You can, you can learn it. Now, having said that, as I've already alluded to, Spanish is, in my opinion, different in many of the Spanish-speaking countries. The Chileans speak one way, the Colombians speak one way, the Mexicans speak one way, the Argentines certainly speak another way. And certainly in this case, for Dominican rendezvous purposes, the Dominican Republic and Dominicans have a different jargon altogether in their Spanish. Now, they do speak Spanish, don't misunderstand me, but there are certain phrases and words that they often use that are purely Dominican. Another characteristic about Dominican or Dominicans and their speaking in Spanish is that they speak very fast. And most people would say, especially to us Westerners or, or, or North Americans, gringos, if you will, they speak not only fast, but they speak loud with, in my opinion, many exaggerated gestures. Very expressive um, in, their, in their speaking. Another thing that you'll find a lot is that they tend to drop the S's um, in their words when they're speaking. Um, you'll, you'll hear it once you get used to it. Donde tu ta? Donde estas? For example, the R tends to sound like L um, instead of in some areas where you may have learned to say por qué. There it sounds more like porque. Um, again, my Spanish is not altogether uh, perfect, but I do get along well and can speak uh, uh, to some extent to get along. Having said that, there are a lot of lexicon, a lot of words, slang words, if you will, that are very unique to Dominicans. And I'm not going to um, spend too much time on this particular video uh, going each going over each one of the uh, most popular uh, Dominican slang words. I know there are many other um, YouTubers who have uh, that information available. Feel free to look that up and search that out and and practice it. Um, it ain't gonna hurt you. Um, if you know some Dominicans, ask them um, some Dominican slang. Que lo que vaina. Como tu as I've already mentioned, as, as an example. Um, but that's it. And I hope, you know, as brief as this was, that you did get some information that will help you and encourage you to focus more on learning Spanish and learning Spanish Dominican style. From me to you, this is Dominican Rendezvous. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please share. Please like this video. Um, I'm doing it because I like you. I like the Dominican Republic, and I want to share information with you uh, that is helpful with you, as many have shared with me over the past in many other endeavors. So thank you very much. Again, from me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.